Hey, Stephanie. Hey, what's up? I'm just here in the bio lab working on the on lab for Bio 377. What are you up to? I just got out of class. Oh, good. Um, do you think you could help me? I need some help with this lab. It's on protein quantification. Okay, yeah, I can help. What do you need help with? Well, it says I have to do something called an assay. Or I really, Do you know what an assay is? Yeah, an assay is a way to measure the amount of a substance in a sample. Like, the one you're working on is for protein quantification. So basically I need to find out how much protein is in uh, this sample? Yep, exactly. You're going to have to do two different chromogenic assays. The Bradford assay and the Lowry assay. Wait, wait, wait. Chroma what? Chromogenic. Did you know that? In chromogenic assays, chemical reagents are added to protein solutions and subsequently develop a color whose intensity is measured in a spectrophotometer. Now you know! So, I'll walk you through the Lowry assay first. Calvin Lowry, the football player for the Titans? No, Charlie. Oliver Lowry. Oliver Cowdery? We totally just talked about him last Sunday. No, Oliver Lowry, the biochemist. He's the one that developed the Lowry assay. In the Lowry assay, we'll be using bovine serum albumin, BSA, immunoglobin G, or IgG, the burette reagent, or reagent A, Bolin reagent, or reagent B, and double distilled water. Some of the equipment used will be micropipettes, a 10 to 25 milliliter pipette, test tubes, cuvettes, as well as the vortex and the spectrophotometer. Hey, thanks Stephanie for coming in and helping me. Yeah, no problem. So, first we need a blank. No, Charlie, not that kind of a blank. We're going to prepare a cuvette without protein. Therefore, the blank solution will be used to zero out the spectrophotometer. First, we need 100 microliters of the double distilled water to create a blank. You put that in your first test tube. Next, you place 100 microliters of BSA in a test tube. And then you prepare three additional dilutions of BSA into three new test tubes. For the second test tube, we will be using 75 microliters of BSA. For the next one, we will be using 50 and then for 25. After adding the BSA, you add the proper amount of water so that the total volume in each test tube is 100 microliters. You then repeat this step using the immunoglobin G and your unknown. So then you will have three sets of test tubes but you do not need to create additional blanks for each set. Next, you will add 500 microliters of reagent A, the burette reagent, into each test tube and gently vortex. Then using a 10 to 25 milliliter pipette and a pump, put four milliliters of reagent B, the full end reagent, into each test tube and again vortex. After each test tube has been mixed, using the vortex, you will wait 15 to 20 minutes for the color to develop. While you are waiting, you can take 1,000 microliters from each test tube and transfer it to a cuvette, so that that way, when the time is up, you are ready to measure your absorbance. For the Bradford assay, you follow pretty much the same steps. However, instead of adding reagents A and B, you will add your Bradford reagent. And you'll use 5 milliliters of Bradford reagent and add it to each test tube, and then gently vortex. You wait 5 minutes for color development. During that time, you can also transfer 1,000 microliters of each sample into a cuvette and change the absorbance on the spectrophotometer to 595 nanometers. After you've gotten your readings from the spectrophotometer, you rinse your cuvettes with water. Once you have rinsed your cuvettes with water, you will rinse them again with methanol. You'll place some methanol in a cuvette and then transfer it into each additional cuvette until each cuvette has then been rinsed with methanol. Then you can rinse them again with, and dry them so that they are ready for your next lab. Then you will enter your data for the Bradford assay into Excel in order to create a standard curve. 
To create a standard curve, open up Excel and create three tables. One for BSA, one for IgG, and the unknown. Enter the concentration and the absorbance data. Insert a scatter plot and select the data for the BSA and the IgG. The plotted data should be represented on one graph. Remember to label the graph appropriately. The concentration should follow along the x-axis and the absorbance along the y-axis. To insert a linear equation, right-click on one of the points plotted on the graph. Select Format Trendline and click the respective options to insert both the linear equation and regression. Build by the science guy. Build by the science guy.